So should I ask for this raise or not? Pop, 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 pop. Hello guys, hello and welcome to Having Coffee with Smoke. Today we are talking about the one time I saved Ericsson from massive memory leaks. We are today in a, a little bit of different setting. I'm planning to get this desk done very soon. Working from home is a bit of a pain, isn't it? So this is my solution to it. I'm planning to get a little bit of exercise while, while standing and coding. And right now I'm kind of struggling how big the desk top should be. Uh, because the sheet that I'm getting will be 180 centimeters and it's quite big of a desk and I would love to have one but at the same time I don't have enough space here and the worst case scenario will just take a saw and cut it <laughs> but anyway let's get to the topic of this video here is an awesome story that I was part of during my employment for Ericsson the first corporation I ever worked for this and many other situations eventually led to my promotion to senior so software developer there so listen up because this is going to be good. I was working for a little bit over a year there and I decided to transition to different team in order to gain some credibility across the organization and score some points. So I took over a team of five people that just started. Everything was new and fresh except for the code unfortunately. Among other things we took over a very old set of many frameworks written in C++. So I know that C++ isn't very popular right now, but back when the frameworks were written, that was the modern language of the time. And frameworks were pretty stable. They weren't giving us that much trouble uh, most of the time. Until this one day. So it was business as usual. We were busy with our daily work, not really paying attention to anything around us, when it hit us. 782 trouble report. Quick glance through the description and I rotated it back. It's not anything that is even remotely related to our code. And I went on with my work. 20 minutes later, I had it back on my roster. It seemed like the product guardian on the other side wasn't gonna budge. For those of you who don't know, 782 is a pretty big of a deal. It usually means that you have to take a look at the thing that is being reported and work on it until it gets solved. No other work is to be done in meantime. Luckily, that wasn't a 71, which meant overtime and possibly weekend work. The ticket author was insisting that our team broke the code of his team and we are to fix it. For us, that couldn't be the case because for the last two months we were hammering the test code and no feature work on production was being done at all. After a couple of political debates with our manager, we decided that might not be actually such a bad thing for us to solve this ticket. We had a pretty bold name and it was time to prove it. We were called Brute Force and our mascot was the Honey Badger. Turns out that some code changes caused the service to run out of memory. Obviously that meant there is a memory leak, but nobody got any idea how it got there or when. It was mostly because the changes were delivered to the production in bigger batches, like a couple of comets in one batch. And it seemed that none of those batches was super suspicious. So I started dissecting the service with Vagrant, running unit tests, testing different scenarios to check if every resource is freed correctly. In C++, you don't have a garbage collector that will clean up after you. You will have to take care of every single thing yourself. To my surprise, nothing seemed obviously broken. If you're anything like me, you hate to leave unsolved problem as you exit the office. It's just, it dwells on you. It keeps me up at night and I can't really escape it, there is no way around it. After a couple of days of banging my head against the wall, the solution came to me in a dream. Does it ever happen to you? In this wild, kinda awake, kinda asleep state, you think about the code and it just hits you. It has to be a smart pointer with a circular reference. The reason had to be simple, but very well hidden. That was my idea. Shared pointers in C++ are basically these references that store the counter of how many times the object is being used. If the last reference is being freed, the object is destroyed with it. 
However, there is this issue in C++ with shared pointers. If we have a couple of more shared pointers that are pointing to each other, each of them think it's actually being used. And if you have enough of these so-called circular references, your system will crash because this is actually a memory leak. Okay, so that's a nice idea, but how do I test this theory? There isn't any very known practice that I have heard of, and looking online didn't bring any uh, good solutions. So I asked around open space, and all I came up with is, well, mate, you basically have to run the debugger and step through the code and see where your reference is being allocated and where it's freed and just figure it out from there. Well, thanks. But there are thousands and thousands of those shared pointers in our code, and I don't have entire eternity to figure out the problems that I didn't create in code that I don't own. This question was playing on a loop in my head. I'm a programmer. How can I automate things? How can I check if the pointer isn't being freed? Time was running out and our manager was getting restless. Product Guardian was flaming our team and telling everyone how we broke their code and how they are stalled and cannot meet their deadline. On the other hand, I was furious. I was very keen to prove myself. You know, there is that promotion that I was after. Again, sleeping on a problem proven to be very useful. I came to the office very early, sat in front of the computer, and then it dawned on me. GDB or GNU debugger has a Python integration in it. So you can write bits and pieces of Python in the GDB as you execute and debug your code. What that meant was I could write small snippets of code and put them to run on a breakpoints. So here was the plan I came up with. Deep in standard library, in the constructor of the shared pointer, put a breakpoint and then collect an address to the pointer being created to a list. At the end of it all, just iterate over that list and print out the addresses of pointers that are still not freed. Good, but that wasn't it yet. Turns out that the pointer was actually to a message object, which was used all over the place, and to pinpoint exactly which method is responsible for failing of freeing this object wasn't that super trivial. So I turned to the Python again and changed my code a little bit. I put the breakpoints both on the constructor and destructor of the shared pointer, and then I collected the stack frame name to a dictionary. So I put the names of the methods in the keys, and the value was just a counter, how many times it happened. Now I could map the allocations and the allocations together and figure out where the numbers are different. And I found it. There was one allocation that wasn't freed. Turns out that wasn't a circular reference at all. Some maniac decided to put delete this in one of the methods of this object. And that caused avalanche of undefined behavior when smart pointer to try to use the actual destructor. To top it off, there was nice try and catch block that hit the problem and kept the program running. <laughs> quick git blame shown that the problem was actually created by the team of that angry product guardian weeks before we started our work. The fix itself was very straightforward, but bad practices aren't easy to correct. They come with years and years of bad habits. And what's worse is the notion that you could get away with a problem simply by offloading it to another team. And in the short term, you might because ultimately we are in one company and we share a common goal. However, in perspective, you lose very valuable credibility as a product guardian and as an engineer. People just won't trust you next time. So this is one of my success stories. If you have yours that you would like to share, please leave it down in the comments. I'm eager to know. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'm gonna see you at the next one. Cheers.